Hello everybody, and welcome to my next Let's Play. It's a game called Final Fantasy VII. It's one of my favorite games of all time. Pretty much universally considered one of the greatest games of all time as well. I'm just going to spend a little time at the beginning going over a couple things. We're basically going to go until the music gets beautiful, which shouldn't take too long. Uh, yeah, so Final Fantasy VII. There's some LPs of this game out there already, but not unlike the Chrono Trigger situation. Um, I looked for the sort of LPs I enjoyed watching and couldn't find any. Uh, so I'm making my own. So this game has a huge cult following. I mean, Final Fantasy as a series is fairly popular, uh, especially for JRPGs, which are not turbo popular genre anymore due to, well, let's just call it, you know, call it what it is. Final Fantasy took the genre off the rails and even the good ones are kind of hard to notice now. But uh, back in the Final Fantasy VII days, this series was amazing and was groundbreaking and was just light years ahead of everyone else in terms of quality of the presentation of story and the quality of the plot and characters and everything. And while the graphics are kind of dated now, um, the game, the characters, the story, the themes, the music, the feelings, they're all timeless. Um, I'm not going to pretend that PlayStation had a great sound synthesizer chip, but the scores are all there. And don't believe me, just listen to some orchestrations of some of this music. So yeah, the game itself is beautiful and was a huge step forward. I love it, and we're going to do the LP of it right now. Just a couple things. If you're in the comments section, um, if you've played the game before, uh, please try not to spoil anything. And I know as soon like people like me are like, I'm going to spoil everything about the plot right now. Sephiroth is Cloud's father. Um, but actually, that's kind of an interesting spoiler for a different game in the series. Anyway, so please don't do that, and... If you do do it now, it's kind of a really obvious joke and it won't be funny anymore because it's like, he asked me not to do something, I'm going to do it. Yeah, that's pretty predictable, Ace. So, in the off chance that someone hasn't played through the game before or hasn't anything with it, I really want them to have the full experience. So, we're going to go for it. The game was the first for the PlayStation series. Uh, typically, people are usually between FF6 or 7 for their favorite in the game in the series of Final Fantasy. The quality of the series followed a rough parabola, in my opinion. With you know, so the real Final Fantasy 2 is probably worse than Final Fantasy 1, but you know, 6, 7, 8 are generally near the top. And, you know, 4 and 9 kind of have people who swear by them, too. But for the most part, 6 and 7 are considered the apex of the series. And, yeah. If you haven't played the game or watched an LP of it or anything, I encourage you to watch this LP or play it or something because uh, it's a work of art. I mean, I'm sounding like one of those fanboys now, but as a work of art, the game really was a significant accomplishment. And it's a beautiful story. Make you feel. Make you grow as a person. And there are specific times where I'm just going to try letting the game speak for itself, because I have a lot of respect for this game, not unlike Chrono Trigger and Final Fantasy VI. A boy and his blob. That's a lie, I hate that game so much. This game's also, or this LP is also going to have some sentimentality and some storytelling from me. So get ready for that. Telling you, back in the day, no game had a camera angle swap pan like that. Party time, everybody. 
Incidentally, the first time I ever saw this game, maybe the second, was at a party. Because I absolutely loved Final Fantasy. Yep, I'm the newcomer. And I didn't have a PlayStation, couldn't afford one and all that. But we were at a friend's place who had out of one, and a different friend I had asked to bring her copy of the game. And yeah, I was that asshole at the party. I was like, hey, so uh, everybody else seems to be having a good time, but you know what? You should you should show me this game. It was a big deal. Yep. And now none of you want to party with me anymore. <laughs> uh, this LP has taken a sad turn already. Alright, some basic items. Sorry that I just blitzed through the combat earlier. Not so sorry that I'm going to stop doing it, but... Mm -hmm. Guess you guys should have figured that out before you brought me along on the job. Okay. So I'm a traitor. His name's Biggs. Yeah, but the door's shut. Probably shouldn't, I just admitted I had no real strong feelings for anyone in the group. I guess maybe I need my money. All Han Solo-like. Alright, that up there, everybody, was a Mako reactor. We's gonna blow it up. It's kind of unfortunate. Okay, that we got into a fight with just Cloud here. So all of the enemies really have a pretty weak. In FF7, you start off a little overpowered and the enemies are more there to wear you down. And you know, they do that adequately. Fight commands are pretty simple at the start. Item lets you use any of the items you're carrying. Potions restore HP. Ethers, I'm going to try to avoid using those. Give you 100 MP, which is used for casting spells. Standard RPG fare, Phoenix Down revives you if you're hurt. Cloud's got some basic magic to start off. Comes through the Materia system, which is what this thing is. This empty menu option that hasn't filled in yet. We'll talk about it later. In these basic fights, you, bas you pretty much just have to attack. How's it going, Wedge? Seems like that's kinda dangerous. Good thing danger's my middle name. Nope. Soldier works for Shinra. Can keep lecturing me. You're gonna respect your environment. If it takes the rest of this bombing mission. No, I can't imagine the CO2 emissions of blowing up a reactor. Alright, we'll take a little side detour. This game still has meaningful treasure chests in it. It's kind of the last one in the Final Fantasy series that has that. I guess FF9 has them too, but... Oh, Final Fantasy, soon exploration will be more or less meaningless because we'll only be able to find potions and crap like that. Well, you live on the planet. I wouldn't get mad at him for that one, that's just being practical. Now is not a good time for an inconvenient truth viewing.
All right. Now this is our first normal battle. I guess I'll show it to you. Even though I'm dying to go off screen and cough. So magic. By default, you can only cast it on one. Bolt works better on machines, and most of the enemies here are people or machines. So just as a showcase, Cloud's got ice and lightning materia, so you can use ice or bolt. Classic Final Fantasy victory fanfare. At the end of the battle, you get experience and money. Money can be exchanged for goods and services. Experience points will contribute towards level ups, where your characters get better stats. Unless we have new enemies. Okay. Those are little floaty guys. They're nothing too much to worry about, but they do attack you with magic instead. One other thing worth noting, Bear has a long range weapon, so I could actually move him into the back row. Characters in the back row take less damage from physical attacks anyway, but they deal equal amounts. Any other character moved into the back row will take half and deal half. So for practicality's sake, we'll move him back there, because he's got a machine gun for a hand. I've taken a wrong turn. I swear I've played this game before, everybody. Okay. Very much an in-game tutorial. Back before it was cool to have them. I think she's just gonna say the same thing, so I'm gonna ignore her. That's how I roll. I'm cold, like Cloud. course. Maybe his personality is not actually like that. Maybe he's trying to be something he's not. Who knows? Alright, this is a save point. I guess you guys could watch me watch, watch me save the game. I'm glad I have memory cards in there. Got a little jittery. That is probably full of FFT saves from the LP I did with Snapwave. I'll take care of that some other time. Unless there's a sweeper in this battle, I'm not going to show you. Uh, okay. So two new enemies. That big looking guy on the back is a sweeper. You can press select to bring up a, a menu that'll show you someone's name. He's dangerous, but also a machine. And now he's dead. So, for the most part, going through these guys, I'm just holding down the attack button and we're going to just mow through them the fast way. Lots of experience points from a sweeper as well, so that's good news. A couple config options I probably could have mentioned. I'm going to crank up the battle speed. I shouldn't be getting too many super challenges, I don't think. Yeah. And we can adjust the window color, so if someone has a good suggestion, put it in the comments section. That'd be pretty fun. Alright, I'm gonna off-screen this one. I think you've seen all the enemies in this area. But you haven't seen a back attack. We'll talk about it some other time. So Final Fantasy VII features the same types of attacks as other games. There's traditional, where you meet an enemy head-on. Restore materia is awesome, but we'll talk more about that later. There's the back attack where they sneak up on you. It's kind of weird. Is he having a psychic premonition? Nope. Something cooler for the story. That was what that was all about. Less cool for Cloud. I'd much rather have the ability to sense danger. Okay, welcome to the first boss. He's got a thousand HP and is called the Guardian Scorpion. He's also a machine, so we're gonna bolt him to death. 
If you use a search scope on you, it means he'll attack you next. Or use search scope on someone else. Or you again if he's feeling stupid. You also may notice that little limit gauge slowly failing, or filling. When that thing gets full, your character is basically built up enough rage about being beaten up that uh, they get a super attack. Most characters have four levels of limit breaks. They are, everybody starts with one, and most of the characters have two limit breaks on each level. Or can learn two on each level. The lower level limit breaks are weaker, but your gauge fills faster. Okay, his tail's gone up. So if you tackle its tail's up, it's going to counterattack with a laser. So, you know what? Let's let you learn. It also has higher defense, I think. Okay, it's calming down. So now we'll use our limit breaks and just tear him a new one. Cloud and Barret's default limit breaks do about triple damage. So that's pretty good. And they keep getting better from there. Capping at doing roughly 15 times the normal amount of damage. That would be the best ones. That's taking quite the beating. Not as much as our friend the Guardian Scorpion, but it still hurts. We gained ourselves an assault gun. That's the next weapon for Barrett. Worth mentioning, we set a time bomb. I guess more reliable than a. Whoops. I was just putting on Barrett's new weapon. Slightly increased his attack power. More reliable than using a detonator there. basically at no risk of running out of time unless you really screw around, so I wouldn't worry too much about that or anything. And enemies dispatched. Now if you look really carefully, you'll see our friend Jessie, who helped us break into here, poking around there. She should be on her way out. And considering she's the one who unlocked the door for us, it's kind of important to save her. Of course, you should have learned not to abandon your friends during a countdown if you played Final Fantasy VI. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, shame on you, you coward. You selfish coward. Pretty low encounter rate in this game. Switch on! So yeah, if you got to this point without rescuing, you'd have to go back at that point, if you could figure it out. Biggs might tell you something helpful, I don't know. I've actually never done that. Ah, and so awesome. Now, some would say I should be healing Cloud. Actually, he's getting pretty low. But, you know, I'm so close to the end. Also, you'll note Barret uh, dealing a bit more damage now that he's got his new weapon. Yeah, I'm making you watch this fight. I'm going to do it if I'm talking. Having learned a little bit from a Dragon Quest 3 LP, I'm going to try to just preserve the flow. I'm 
talking fairly literally, but also kind of a feng shui thing, I guess. Stop falling over, Jesse. No power out? Blew up an eighth of the city's... Eh, whatever. Approximately 12% longer. Actually, there's multiple cities. Midgar has a lot of reactors, but it's not it doesn't have all of them. Got a little singe there, Wedge. You clown. All right. Give me my money. Oh. Alright, and at this point I think I'm going to end this video. I'll see you all in the next one.